One thing I can promise you is that any exercise or programming method I share has been thoroughly tested and researched. I will never cover that which I don't have experience with or feel hasn't benefited my physique. And this accountability is held through years of workout logs and training footage. So I can pinpoint each year what I was focusing on and how that process affected my gains. Nothing is forgotten because all is cause and effect when you're a real elite natty. And changes are mostly training related. Rarely diet once the basics are in place. Backed by logical arguments. Never saying, just do this without an explanation. And even if something is unconventional and may appear at first glance to be made up for views to an untrained eye, know that there is always a justifiable reason. It's usually difficult to come up with strong counter arguments that are not logical fallacies. Because content creators who want you to fulfill your potential put a lot of time and effort into thinking about these advanced training concepts. And if our ideas did not work, then you would not come back for more. Yet, our community is like an old school MMORPG that does not go out of style, built to last just like our bodies, since we're not in you over. So in order to acquire the body of your dreams, your programming must be nuanced, with every training variable serving a clearly defined purpose. For instance, in the strength context, what got you from a two play bench to a three play bench is never what'll get you to three and a half plates or four plates. I would know, and that's where the knowledge gap lies. Don't get me wrong, a 315 bencher is very strong, but they don't know what it takes to unlock that next level, which is disproportionately way harder. That extra push is the X factor. So I can promise you right off the bat that certain influencers offer advice that may work for your first two to three years of lifting, but after which, depending how important this lifestyle is for you, you might be played with plateaus. Then falsely believe you hit your so-called natural limit when it was really where the fun began. Because those extra 10 pounds of muscle, or whatever it is, is what's going to make you be that guy. Far beyond just looking like you lift. That people actually question your natty status. That your FFMI is borderline. That you can inspire the world to want more and realize that they've always been capable. Thus collectively elevating the standard. So as Natural Hypertrophy stated in our recent power building debate, this last 10 to 20% is the deal breaker. And that's precisely what we fight for. It sure as heck what I fight for. And in case you guys can't tell, my content is not designed for complete beginners. I generally don't like discussing very basic concepts that won't serve you much after the newbie gains phase, which is very short term. So obviously, if you want to be like your idols, then you require specialized advice from those who actually live this lifestyle, who only have the purest of intentions for you. And that's what I try to do. I've invested thousands of dollars into my home gym and filming equipment in order to serve you best. And I stand by what I believe in. I can sleep really good at night knowing that my advice will change your life, that I gave you a banger of an informative segment that'll give you those aha moments. I'm here to serve you, but it's not about me. I'm just a messenger and my training journey forces me to get my shit together. So that anything that comes out of my mouth is applicable to you. It has to be win-win. I get gains, you get them too. Spreading around the gems and then feedback comes around. It's a relationship of sort and the community is my master. It is you who allows all this to be possible. You allow me to refine my process, which in turn benefits all of us. So you're my master, not the other way around. So with that said, there needs to be some reciprocation. And many times what I've observed is that many of the best practices that are S tier effective are hardcore exercises or methods that A, allow you to get more out of less weight, B, have amazing progression potential, C, can appear complicated at first glance, but aren't when you actually set it up, and D, look tough or have some false perception of danger. Oh, and E, are barbell, dumbbell, or calisthenics based that can be replicated in any training facility across the globe. Meaning, there's no barrier to entry or discrimination. But what connects all these together is hard work, and there's no way around it. 
And so that's why I experiment for a respectable time before I finally make dedicated videos. And when I do so, it's from the heart and information that I wish I knew earlier, stuff that I'd be willing to pay money for, but I give it all for free and it's never a one and done thing. There will be a recurring theme in the yearly macro cycle, often revisited with newer and refined explanations. So even though the fitness world can be repetitive at times, at the end of the day, we're still trying to learn more. It's all positive. And those who genuinely try this stuff always end up getting massive results, becoming OG supporters, sometimes surpassing me, and of course, creating their own YouTube channels, which I love to see. The torch must be passed on. We need more bonfires, more hardcore, more refinement. Beating the bronze and silver era legends, which in our little niche world, I feel we've been trailblazing. That said, as wonderful as much of these discoveries are, I must admit that sometimes it's quite disappointing that many of the best approaches for acquiring muscle and strength are the least implemented. And it's not because they don't work, far from it. If we're sharing something potent with you that you actually see us doing on a frequent basis and the interest is not reciprocated, well, there must be something that is turning you off. And recently, it's dawned on me that I finally understand why. And that is the hardcore factor. Unfortunately, many lifters are soft and do not want to do things that include brutal effort. I also believe that rather than being motivated, they get discouraged, thinking that what we're showing is unobtainable because it's so hard. And that is extremely heartbreaking to me. So. It explains why the masses gravitate towards easy exercises. They don't want a challenge. They're repulsed by it. They reject old school and they want good enough gains with the least amount of effort. Notice the pattern of trying to make training less hard in order to get the same results. This is the real reason why easy machines and reps and reserve training became so popular. Even the extreme rejection of strength standards or fundamental compounds that historically built the best physiques of all time. The pen limb has swung the other way into a lazy gym culture of those who don't even know what it feels like to go all out, just annihilating themselves just because they wanted a challenge. No ounce of hybrid training or resemblance of that kind of background. Everything must be optimal and bro science is rejected even though it's often confirmed by emerging data. And funny enough, the ultimate meatheads are still the ones with the best physiques because they get after it the hardest and are consistent. But the blame typically ends up on genetics. Meanwhile, those who don't work hard are the same ones going on SARMs websites and training like DLs. Little effort, no making noise, never trying to be exceptional, to be war ready, that nothing can break you down, the desire to be the baddest mother in the gym, it's all gone. It's sad, but that's exactly what's being played out in your local gym. Whatever is tough as nails or annihilating gets the least respect, but the non-important stuff that can be defined as accessory work gets serious love. Bodybuilding is not about chiseling pebbles. And now average lifters are majoring in the minors on a level that I've never seen before. It wasn't like this four years ago. So after global events finished, something changed in the fitness scene and I don't know what it is because I'd expect the precise opposite to occur for hardcore to come back stronger than ever because were we not making legendary gains training at home with the bare bones? How could such valuable experiences be forgotten? I now see a backwards ranking system. Heck, even these modern tier lists are filled with cognitive dissonance and contradictions, promoting nonsense as S tier, when these same people didn't build their physiques that way, and for the most part, hasn't built any elite physiques. So who's really doing this for views? That's my question to you. Plus, I see this with other influencers who many times are small, and give advice on concepts that really aren't important. Then you got guys who are like, I regret bulking, even though the moment they stop is when their gains slow down the most. 
and they also built the majority of their muscle in a surplus. So again, going back to exercise selection, this is the primary reason why so many lifters love machines, even the crappy ones, and most of them are. Let's be real about that. A properly designed machine is probably superior. I will admit that, but you're not training on one unless you go to a high-end gym or you're gonna buy your own piece of equipment, which good luck doing that, you're not. I already know. So guys are training on the shit ones. Let's get that straight. Anyway, this is why they criticize the basics like bench presses, barbell squats, dips, pull-ups, and burpees. They won't admit it, but they move away from time proven or creative humbling training because nine out of 10 times, it's hard, honest work. It's that simple. No bullshit or hand holding. You can't hide your strength. You will be crushed and you'll be forced to train like an animal. Guys don't want that. They want what's easy, like Tom Platz used to scream. People don't want what's hard, they want what's easy. What looks showy. Forget about it. Soft crybabies. That's why day one newbies want optimal or efficient, which is understandable, but also insane, since they have no experience with any form of training. They haven't paid their dose. And lo and behold, most of these newbies stay small forever even with smart training that one could argue is objectively superior because their mentality was already to begin with. That's what it goes back to. And I'll tell you, I can't relate because I grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. Rest in peace, Akira Toriyama. I wouldn't be making videos were enough for you. I was mesmerized by Goku and Vegeta training in the gravity chamber, the hyperbolic time chamber training to death, then coming back for more fighting, non-stop training, always hitting new power levels and transformations. Each saga, all of the Z heroes becoming better versions of themselves, being able to beat the former top bad guy. The whole show motivated the fuck out of me. And there's a reason why I love training with the red and blue lights while listening to Dragon Ball Z music when I'm hitting PRs. I get off the hard training. In fact, I fucking love it and can't imagine training any other way. How could you not? How could you go to the gym and want to baby yourself? No, I want puke-worthy squat sessions. I want to be drenched in sweat. I want to be gasping for air. I want to have the nastiest pumps. I want to be screaming in pain, feeling tortured by the weights, grinding, failing, falling on the floor, hitting PRs, not being a little bitch, facing what's uncomfortable head on, yes. This is what I observed in old school anime and also at the gym when I first signed up. In the beginning, everything was hardcore. I remember the cable stations were least popular. There was iron rattling plates, which my original gym still has. Oh, what music to my ears. In the old days, we used to always leave space between the plates. So the plates would jingle, so the plates would make noise. When you came up from a squat, you would and completed the rep and go Whoa! deep throat roar that was like music and every rep you wanted to hear that sound again and you wanted to complete that rep with as much force as you possibly could that would break that would break steel man that that, that feeling like you had to do it and that's why I bought it for my own personal gym and seeing big guys repping out the basics while wearing wife beater tank tops very much a hybrid of what Arnold and Dorian Yates did. It was coming out of two hardcore eras, which by the way, if you were to watch those old videos, you would 100% be motivated to train hard. were enhanced, they'll do a lot more for you than current influencers who don't really know what they're doing. 
So I'm still addicted to those classic videos and the fire always comes back. But nowadays, the power racks are practically empty. The heavy dumbbells are collecting dust and I barely see anyone doing challenging exercises. It's to the point where I'm honestly the hardest working lifter in most gyms and normies look at me like I'm batch crazy, especially when I'm lifting heavy or doing calisthenics. And you know what? Maybe I am different. Maybe I am a little bit of a masochist, but the gym shouldn't feel like a soulless library. Where's that ball busting intensity that used to be an everyday occurrence? There's always an excuse or half-hearted criticism that can easily be debunked. The gym culture is soft and weak and it shows in the physiques. In an age where there's more information than ever before, you'd think the average lifter would look better and yet they've somehow gone backwards. Why? It is paralysis by analysis and trying to avoid what has worked for decades. Guys think they're better than the bronze or silver era bodybuilders. They'd rather take shortcuts and waste time on speculation that even if better, is still insignificant in the grand context of your lifting journey. Everything is now, 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 turning the dial to easy mode. And to repeat myself again, even though many got home gyms in 2020, it seems they're suffering from amnesia. They're back to being soft. They lost that prisoner mindset as if they learned absolutely nothing. In fact, we seem to have done a complete 180. <sighs> I'm disgusted by the modern gym culture. The best gyms are often the worst in terms of the crowd's vibe. No energy surrounded by those who spin their wheels for years, only for someone training at home with just a bar and a power rack or for a calisthenics bro to far surpass them. Just look at your average bar athlete at the public outdoor park. Almost all of them mog the average gym goer to oblivion. Is that due to genetics or hard work with what you have? It's effort on work that has no choice but to put you in place. And there isn't any fear of failure either as safety is guaranteed. So nowadays, guys are more afraid than ever of injuring themselves, all because of exaggerated lies. They genuinely believe they will tear a peck on a deep incline bench press. They actually believe they'll tear both biceps at the same time from preacher girls. They believe that good mornings will snap their backs when it's a similar hip hinge to RDLs with less weight. Somehow, they think reverse grip bench press is dangerous when it's actually safer on the shoulders due to external rotation. They believe that lifting heavy through extended range of motion is bad for the joints when it actually bulletproofs weaker positions. They fear any restrictive bars, waiting in line for the dual cable station with their trusty adjustable bench by their side. And movements that have historically been considered low skill are now considered high skill in a hypertrophy context which makes them even more dangerous. Which this idea should sound like absolute lunacy to anyone who even has the slightest proficiency. It's mostly brute force. And yet these guys act like the big foundational lifts are equivalent to Olympic weightlifting. Are you serious? They somehow think that barbells or calisthenics are too unstable for them, even though they're likely never to get strong enough where this ever becomes a problem. In fact, we could even assert the opposite. With time, you master those movement patterns, becoming so skilled that every exercise you do practically mimics a Smith machine. Ever analyze the sets of experienced ventures? There's almost no horizontal deviation. It's perfectly up and down, like an elevator motion, as vertical as possible within reason, each rep looking the same. And that's the other thing. Even if you're not on that level, if you at least train hard, all motor units are recruited and the slowdown of rep speed would teach you how to find your groove. Give your body more credit. You're not kinesthetically challenged, but guys don't accept that truth and even think that training to failure and maxing out is dangerous when it's clearly not if proper form is used. Training hard does not mean ego lifting. In this case, in the classic textbook, Science and Practice of Strength Training, hitting one rep maxes is defined as the max effort method. That's right. It's a method, not a bro ego lifting strategy. 
It's been used by world record holding athletes for decades and I've personally done the same since 2014. Maxing out hundreds of times. Yes, you heard that right. And not once incurring a single strain or injury. Even doing double max effort on 1800 calories at almost single digit body fat. That says everything and I'm not a freak of nature. I didn't invent the method. It came out during the Soviet Union and I employ it for every exercise that I seek to maximize strength on. Always rotating variations to eliminate overuse and overcome the law of accommodation. Do you like hearing this for the millionth time? I told you so. I've been screaming from the rooftops. We're always winning, never getting injured. Yet again, roid head influencers with the biggest clout project their weaknesses onto you and you fall for it over and over again while real naturals continue to train hard proving them wrong year after year and yet few fucking listen. They still repeat like a parrot, except the parrot didn't know any better. The fitness community is listening to the wrong drug induced parrot who regurgitates nonsense that doesn't apply to us. It's become a game of telephone gone extremely wrong and it only seems to be getting worse. So as positive as I am regarding the direction of what we do, I don't know how I feel about this upcoming generation of lifters. They're being influenced by the wrong crowd. Those who don't have your best interests at heart and old school guys are only getting older and or less interested in this space. So it's our job to continue spreading the truth and doing what's right. We must keep the hardcore training mindset alive, but find better ways of delivering our message. Never giving up, even though it can feel discouraging. Because you know what? We're used to that anyway. Since we plan on training for the rest of our lives, and many of us have already put in a decade, who cares how long it'll take to spread the truth? It always will come out. And easy nonsense will be filtered out. That which caters to rank beginners will not match the physiques of the past. And the basics will never go away. Science will continue reinforcing many of our beliefs, which we've been ahead of the game on so many occasions. Sometimes wrong, and that's fine. But overall, as Leroy Colbert used to say, there's no price on experience. What I went through experience, you cannot buy it. It takes time. And I put in the time. And I enjoy exporting it to you. Not bad. Now that's both of them up. And I felt the hey, I said, hey, shit. <laughs> See, that's what I mean by muscle memory. And that's what I mean by the body never forgets. And the best lifters you can listen to are experienced, intelligent naturals who are permanently passionate about this lifestyle. And I'm telling you right now, I'll never stop grinding. I'll be lifting till the day I die. And I'm giving my highest effort no matter what life throws at me. Fitness will never be compromised. We have one body and one life. Respect it and respect yourself enough to be a communicator that won't sugarcoat what it takes to be impressive in the gym and what is impressive. Let's not lower our standards to make the masses feel better and let's not hide what actually got us results. Don't forget where you came from because the people you're trying to help now were once just like you. They deserve to hear the real. If that means they surpass us in a fraction of the time, excellent. That's what we wanna see. Better physiques and most importantly, tougher mindsets. I want our community to be full of intellectual muscle heads with sharp critical thinking skills. Of course, understanding exercise science, but at the same time, valuing experience and staying 100% drug free. And we need to be insistent about the term lifetime natural. This is the only way to differentiate ourselves and prove that what we do is cause and effect and that not everything is due to having superior genetics. Prove the black pillars wrong, stay hard and become allergic to weak minded training ideas. Even if you're maintaining, make your minimal work count. Reject all softness because that's really what's killing your gains.